All right, hello, and uh, and thank you for watching this video, and I appreciate your patience. Uh, I know uh, I've been a little bit slow in getting uh, some of these videos published. I've been <laughs> working hard um, trying to uh, prepare this data for the competition, and my hope is that it is an interesting data set, uh, one that you can explore, and my hope is also that, uh, that you are able to make predictions for it. So... Um, from the uh, course website, um, you will want to click this uh, link that says link to join the Kaggle competition. And so that will take you to uh, Kaggle. And you will need to create an account uh, on Kaggle. And in order to uh, join the competition, it, it's, uh, it's free. And uh, just make sure that when you do create your account, you use uh, your name, your real name, so that... Uh, I can kind of make sure and, and link, you know, your your name and your entries to to you. Um, so once you're there, um, there you'll see some uh, descriptions about it. Uh, but probably the first place you'll go will be go to the data section, and you will um, you will download the the data here. So you'll come here and you'll just kind of go through each of these files and you'll download them. And, uh, and I want to talk about uh, these different files, and I want to talk about how I created these files so that you can, uh, in your analysis, you can kind of work through it and, and understand uh, where all of these things are coming from. So I want to take a little bit of time uh, to uh, discuss that uh, as well. Um, you will also find uh, this PDF uh, posted. And it says final project description.pdf. So there will be uh, two final projects, um, a regression project and a classification project. Um, I'm going to, I have the regression project posted up uh, right now. And, uh, and in a few days, I will have the classification project open. And the, uh, the deadline for the classification project will, uh, will come uh, after. So you'll have. Uh, some time to work on both and and hopefully all of the kind of skills and things you learn from the regression project will will translate well for the classification project obviously things will be different um, but hopefully um, it will make sense so uh, the grading of the uh, the final project uh, will be primarily be your report and script verification and then a small portion will be uh, you know, associated to the competition performance. So I do want you guys uh, to be motivated to uh, have a well-performing, um, uh, I guess, predictions. Uh, but, you know, there there is a random aspect. Uh, you will be evaluated on the test set, which is hidden from you guys. And so, um, but, uh, and then uh, on the leaderboard, I'll, I'll explain, there's a public and a private thing. So, uh, so anyway, um, 10% will be due to the competition performance, um, but then the, the rest will be on your report and script verification. And basically, if you uh, rank in the top three, uh, you will get uh, extra credit. And then if you are in fourth place, if your team is in fourth place, you'll get full credit. And then basically, you'll lose uh, some points, you know, kind of er everything after that. And so if you're in the kind of the, the lower... Um, lower half of the class you'll you'll only get uh, some of the points okay so the um, the competition is conducted on Kaggle and your job is to create a supervised learning model that's able to make accurate predictions okay uh, and and these rules and guidelines apply both to regression and classification projects obviously the variables and what you're predicting will be different uh, but Basically, you'll get a training data and a test data set. Uh, the training data will contain all of the input variables and the output variables, whereas the test data will only have the input variables and you make predictions for the output or the, the test variables. Okay, And then um, your homework three assignment basically walks you through creating kind of your first set of predictions. Okay, So um, when you go to Kaggle, you know, uh, register for it, and then under the team, uh, you will um, want to create your teams, okay? So um, invite, you know, somebody will be the team leader, it doesn't really matter who, and then you'll kind of invite um, teammates to join your team. And so this should align with 
uh, you know, the teams that uh, that you produced on the or created in the um, Google uh, Google Sheet. Uh, so use that and uh, and create your teams. And part of your very first homework assignment is as a team to submit uh, your first set of predictions. Just as just to kind of push you along, make sure you are keeping up and uh, and and making uh, making uh, predictions and getting everything to work. So um, so yes. Uh, join Kaggle, create an account, create your team, and then um, you know, kind of walk through homework three, and uh, and that should help you know help you kind of prepare your first set of predictions that you can then uh, submit. Okay, so uh, the way it kind of works on Kaggle is that on the prediction file. Okay, so um, I think here I've got. Uh, the test submission uh, where did it go I'm looking for it okay all right okay so I think these test submissions were created um, using kind of a, a random forest model in um, uh, in R for kind of this is kind of what you get if you followed uh, the homework three instructions and basically so in the test um, file there's what 2,952 uh, predictions uh, made all right and about 80 percent of these are in the uh, public leaderboard and 20 percent are in the private leaderboard okay so when you submit this when you submit your test submissions okay on uh, on the leaderboard, it will tell you this is your score. This is your score based on the uh, the public uh, data set. Okay, and um, it's the mean squared error, and so you want um, you want kind of the lowest here, and then uh, but then the final rankings. Okay, which are okay. Well, this is <laughs> this will be hidden from you. It's available for me to see. Okay, the final rankings will be based on the private leaderboard okay so this is just to kind of avoid um, I, I guess you will get penalized if you overfit the public leaderboard so if you kind of keep going back and forth making submissions to try to tweak this as low as possible you might end up be overfitting the um, public leaderboard whereas you know your private leaderboard might actually be lower so so you don't um, so you want to kind of avoid that. Uh, obviously, you know, cross validation will help you avoid that, but it's not, um, it's you know, it's not perfect. And uh, again, you don't want to use the test data as part of your modeling process. You kind of want to do as much of your training um, uh, based on the training data, and you don't want to kind of say like, okay, this this one, uh, you know, I eked out a few more points in the test data, and so therefore it's it's the better, uh, you know. Uh, in this iterative process where you're kind of just trying to eke, eke things out because you might end up overfitting the public thing whereas the final rankings will be based on the private, okay? So, um, uh, and you don't know which of these are public and which of these are private. Uh, but you'll submit this and um, and it will kind of, you know, give you a score uh, based on that. So, um, so, you know, when the competition ends, we're going to use the results of the private leaderboard uh, for the final kind of ranking and the performance, okay? Um, and it, there's a good chance that uh, the ranking of the private leaderboard will be different from the rankings of the public leaderboard. So um, so that's uh, just something to keep in mind, okay? Uh, the other important part is I want your results to be reproducible, okay? So you'll create uh, an R, um, I, and you know Python is allowed to, uh, a script that's going to create produce the pre uh, predictions that you submitted for the competition. Uh, this script um, doesn't need to produce graphics or any other kind of output used in the report. The script should just be run, and when it's done running, it should produce the um, predictions. Okay, so you'll use the train model for the predictions, and basically everything should be done using the predict function. I don't want to see things at the end where you're just kind of replacing <laughs> values um, manually or using um, uh, you know at the end of the script okay uh, everything should be using whatever model that you used okay 
Uh, the script should begin with loading the training and testing data as they appear on the Kaggle, uh, Kaggle data page, and, um, and you should be uh, using that. Now, if you know anything, if you're doing some feature engineering, if you're um, doing any of that, that should all be kind of um, produced uh, as part of the script to, uh, to produce your predictions, okay? Final line of the script should be uh, whatever, you know, uh, uh, basically write, write underscore CSV that produces the CSV files um, that, that you submit to Kaggle, okay? Um, if this script doesn't run, Okay, we'll 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 test this out at the end. If the script doesn't run, if there you know produces errors, then you know that that's going to be a problem. So um, so make sure uh, before you kind of submit your predictions and whatnot, make sure you're able to kind of reproduce the results. You know, on on a teammate's computer. So you you run it. You should be able to give it to a teammate, and they should be able to produce the same results. Now, there is kind of one warning and one exception that I, that I'm willing to accept. Is that uh, some of the packages? So, be, with tidy models, you can kind of load up other libraries, and you know, Parsnip um, makes calls to these. And sometimes those have their own kind of random thing. Um, so even if you set a random seed in R, sometimes using those other things ends up, you know, when you run it on someone else's computer, they end up producing slightly different results. So if uh, if that's the case. Uh, one alternative that I will allow to just kind of verify that you know the results that you produced um, is to um, uh, run uh, to screen record. Okay, so you will record your screen of you kind of loading. You know, starting with an empty environment, you load the data in, you run the script, and you produce the results, and then um, you know kind of just open up the results and you know slowly scroll through uh, you know some of the predictions so I can kind of just make sure yep those are indeed are the values that were produced by the script um, to uh, to submit because uh, I, I don't know if um, students will be will try to cheat but um, um, you know I basically I just want to make sure that uh, you know the values that you produce as far part of your predictions, are indeed produced by the model and not just you know going in and and manually editing um, some of these these values here okay uh, so if you screen record um, that will be acceptable and uh, and you can kind of upload you know that uh, the video of your screen recording to say uh, you know like a private YouTube channel or you know uh, private you know Google Drive folder and uh, and you can provide me a link with that and I would accept that um, if you're uh, if you're not able to reproduce your results with the script. I, you know, the produ reproducing your results with the script is the most ideal situation, but if for whatever reason it's not um, being, you're able to reproduce it, I'll, I'll accept a screenwriting, okay? Um, and then, um, uh, you know, regarding the report, uh, here, here's an outline of what I want to see in the report. Now, um, I, I, I want to just kind of throw this out there regarding um, you know AI tools and Chat GPT and things that um, students, you know, might be tempted to use as far as uh, writing your report. So, <laughs> when you uh, use these um, uh, AI tools, there, there's a tendency for them to produce a whole bunch of verbose kind of slop. A, you know, uh, you know, you have spam for unwanted emails, and then uh, the I think the term for kind of unnecessary AI text is slop and I don't maybe that that will change but I think that's kind of uh, the, this kind of all of this junk that uh, AI can produce um, you know I, I it's such a slog to have to read through this and and I've I know you know sometimes students email me uh, and, and I know they've used AI you know it's, it's hard to prove some of these things but it's just it, it feels like I have to write read through five paragraphs of stuff just to get you know what somebody could set in three sentences so um, you know as far as AI stuff you know <laughs> tell it to keep it brief okay <laughs> if you're gonna use it uh, you know obviously I think humans do a better job as far as uh, writing things but you know if you're gonna use the tool tell it to keep it brief and to the point um, uh, so anyway um, basically a little bit uh, you know, provide a short introduction. I mean, everybody's using the same data sets. I don't need to have, uh, you know, a wholly uh, original detailed thing, but just 
uh, a little bit to just kind of make sure you understand kind of the bearings of the thing. Um, and then I want you to do some exploratory data analysis. Uh, the exploratory data analysis could be, you know, just looking for interesting trends. And it doesn't even have to be necessarily things that you end up using as far as making predictions go. But I do want to see you um, explore the data, okay? Um, and uh, and you are required to include some vi data visualizations there. So um, uh, I'll read through that and just hopefully see some something uh, interesting uh, there. And then... Um, uh, then I want you to kind of go through and uh, describe any kind of uh, pre-processing steps you've done, any of the recipes you've created. Uh, I want you to, um, you know, obviously the length of this section will depend on how how many recipes you've created, um, and so that this area will depend. But it, what I want to see is basically a a good effort here. <laughs> okay. Um, and then candidate models and the model tuning. Uh, I want to see at least a minimum of five different candidate models that you've considered. Um, you know, you, you might end up considering uh, a, a lot, but uh, I guess kind of limit yourself to try to limit yourself to 12. Um, and then you'll know you'll talk about, you know, how did you kind of compare all of these things? Um, how did you evaluate? How did you tune um, the, uh, the aspects here? Okay. And then, you know, what was the final mod model you select, selected? That should be, um, you know, uh, there should be ex explanations there. And then uh, and in the appendix, and you must include this, uh, include your kind of final script uh, with, you know, any kind of annotations and comments. And then um, I also want to see a list of each of the team members and what each team member did. So that will be, um, that will be required. Okay, so let me um, let me talk about the data. Okay, this data um, when you download it, it it came from a basically an Amazon survey. So um, researchers they they got uh, approximately five thousand volunteers uh, who said yes, I'm willing to share kind of my Amazon purchase history uh, with you, and you can kind of look at you know trends and stuff and. And they, they gathered data for people um, from January of 2018 to December of 2022. So that's a period of uh, five years, basically all of 2018, 19, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. And um, so five years of stuff. And, uh, you know, that includes kind of a, a peak pandemic time. And, uh, and these are people who uh, said, yes, uh, I'm, I'm just willing to share. Now, uh, with their 5,000 volunteers that they got, they, um, you know, collected some uh, demographic uh, information, okay? And so what I did, so the original data here, um, uh, I, I took that data and I split it, okay, into basically um, two, two tables here, all right? So um, I have customer info train which has um, approximately half of the uh, half of the people I have I think 2,512 people and uh, customer info test has um, approximately the same number of people 2,513 people okay and um, and so these uh, these are the kind of survey response tables so let me kind of I guess maybe I'll, I'll walk through the, uh, the script. So the original, we have Amazon purchases, okay? And this is a huge, huge, huge file. Um, so this is, uh, this was my original source of data. And um, it is taking, uh, it's taking a long, long time to open. Uh, but here, I'll go ahead and I'll run through uh, some of my script here. And... Okay, so it's uh, right now. It is too big even for um, for me to just kind of load up in um, in Excel. But uh, let me let me load up library tidyverse. And library tidy models. Okay, so here's um, I, I got I got. I got it kind of open 
in Excel, but it, it gave me a warning that it's going to, you know, uh, it reached the end of uh, Excel's workbook file. And um, if I were to save this, I would lose a lot of information. And so, you know, this, this data set includes things like the order date, um, the purchase price, how many, um, what was the name of the thing they bought. So they bought, uh, I guess, a 16 gigabyte SDHC card. This is kind of the item number on Amazon. Uh, there's a category, flash memory. And then this is the kind of unique I identifier for each individual. Okay, so this is an individual who, if you go into uh, the survey table, which uh, is not provided to you. So the Amazon purchases and survey table is not provided to you. Um, but let me just show you. You can you can find each of these. Uh, uh, things here. So you can. Uh, I'm going to search for that that individual, and so that's this person. Okay, and so this we have kind of information about this person, this person's age, um, this uh, their you know race information, their education information, their income education, uh, ed income level. Uh, gender, um, uh, sexuality, sexuality uh, where their state that they're in, and how many people, you know, information about kind of uh, how many people use their Amazon account, how many people are in their household, how often do they make purchases on Amazon, uh, things like that, how often per, uh, per month and things like that. Um, and so you can find that information and you can say, all right, well, you know, this person made a purchase and then, you know, a few days later they made another purchase and so on and so forth. Uh, and so this, this table has, has lots and lots of information. So let me just kind of go through the, the script. So first I kind of loaded up the entire um, Amazon purchases uh, data frame or uh, CSV file. And, uh, and so you can see there were, um, you know, 1.8 million uh, 1.8 million uh, entries in this thing, and, uh, and there were a few, um, I guess, problematic entries. One, one we had uh, order dates that came after uh, 2023, so it came after the kind of data collection period, and uh, and I'm, I decided to remove anything that came before January 1st, 2023, because the number of orders placed. Um, after January 1st, 2023 was inconsistent. Um, some states had no orders, some states had, um, you know, still had some orders, and and uh, it was just kind of an inconsistent reporting period. So to find a, kind of keep everything consistent, we, I, I chopped, chopped it down, and so that reduced it, you know, that got rid of around 40,000 entries, um, and then it kind of got that. There's a there's another library called uh, Janitor. So if you, if you look at names, um, Amazon right now. Um, this is kind of the the names as they appear in the data file, which you know we have spaces and uh, and things like that. So uh, Janitor has a has a nice little feature that kind of cleans up these names. And so uh, so when I do that, uh, when I say you know take Amazon, clean the names, and if I ask for what are the names on Amazon now, you'll see it kind of makes everything lowercase, replaces the spaces with underscores. Um, which just makes it, uh, you know, replaces parentheses and stuff with uh, with underscores, and um, and it just makes it a little bit easier to kind of type these things in. Okay, and then um, if you take a look at this table, uh, one of the things it says, you know, purchase price per unit and the quantity. Um, most of the things you just pe people just kind of bought one one of these things at a time, but sometimes um, you know they might order, you know. Uh, multiple uh, of an item. Uh, one of the things I guess Amazon sold was like f uh, photo prints, uh, you know, 15 cents for a print and somebody might order like uh, 100 of these prints or something like that. Um, so uh, I create uh, I created a column called item cost, which would be price per unit times, uh, you know, whatever quantity uh, that is. And so that becomes uh, an additional kind of column uh, in the data set over here. Okay, so the item cost uh, gets added there. All right. Uh, then I brought in the uh, customer information. Uh, did the same thing. Clean the names, and um, you know, if you look at kind of the survey information, um, uh, one of the things that we're going to use is uh, which state um, is the person in, 
And, uh, and there were a few people who said, I did not reside in the United States. So we're going to get rid of those people, okay? And then um, regarding the age, I'm going to turn that into a factor and things like that, okay? Um, I created a table, an intermediary table called orders. I took kind of the entire Amazon thing, which was a line-by-line -line entry, um, that uh, you know had each individual item, and I kind of wanted to create um, orders. So what I said was, you know, uh, first let's get rid of anything where the shipping address, uh, shipping state was missing. So, uh, so this reduces some of our entries here, um, but we're gonna um, because a lot of our predictions will rely on state. Uh, I, I filtered those out. Okay, I'm I grouped. Um, our data by the order date and the survey response ID, basically the customer. So, um, you know, it, while it is possible that, uh, and I know this happens, uh, but there there was not really a way to kind of distinguish this. I just I made the assumption that um, all of the items that a customer ordered on one particular day uh, is basically one order there. Okay, so you know if they bought five different items on say July twelfth. Um, that forms, uh, you know, that creates a group, and then um, the the thing will be the uh, total cost, basically the sum of the item cost and the item count, or I guess the I guess unique items count is just going to be how many rows got joined together. And then once we did that, I joined that with um, the uh, response uh, information, uh, you know, what state that they came from. So that creates kind of the orders table. Um, it, it joins all of this information, so it takes a few seconds for it to uh, to complete. Um, and but we'll get basically a, a table with uh, 768,513 uh, kind of unique orders. So these are um, basically on this day, this person uh, ordered one item for a total of 29.99. Uh, this person on this day. Uh, ordered three things, three unique items for a total of fifty-one ninety-three, so on and so forth, and um, and that person resides in Louisiana. So, so that's kind of the orders table, and then um, I uh, I extracted out the uh, month and year from the orders table. So, so from that, from the order date, I'm going to extract out the month and year for for each of these things, um, and then so that's that's the orders table. And then what I've decided to do is I decided to split our data, okay? We're going to take the survey data, uh, of which we have around uh, 5,000 uh, customers. I'm going to split that in half, okay? Half of them are going to be in my training data, and half will be in my testing data. So we have 2,513 in my test data and 2,512 people in my training data. And so... Um, uh, basically, uh, I've taken kind of uh, the orders, and I've joined joined them with the survey training. So basically, from Amazon, we're going to get just all of the orders that correspond to the 2,512 people. And so this will create my orders train again. Um, you know what what are the months and years that go there, and then um, uh, from there. I, uh, so this is, um, so, you know, approximately half of the orders um, correspond to um, people in the training data, all right? So in the training data, they, they created 389,130, you know, out of 768,513. So, you know, just a fraction over half, so, you know, about 50.6% of the orders in the um, you know entire data set correspond to the uh, training uh, individuals in the training data okay and then uh, what I did was I said go through this training data all right so these are these are the individuals in our training data basically uh, you know the person their cost the item count the, the uh, and then and then I also joined it with all of kind of the demographic information uh, from that thing and I said you know what I want you to go through group by the year, month, and the state, and give me the total cost. Okay, so um, so when we do that, that's going to say, all right, in um, January of 2018 in Alabama, 
the total kind of cost, the total cost of all of these things, so if I were to say filter to, um, we want a, a one, okay? And I only want uh, for 2018, right? And then I only want, uh, whoops, Alabama, okay? Um, if we took the, the total cost of these orders, okay, all of these different orders, there were, I guess, uh, uh, 53 entries here. If we add them all up, we get, uh, um, I think it would add up to this number. That's what, that's what it should <laughs> do, okay? So, um, so that's what we have. And so I said, you know, group by, I want the, um, kind of the sum of the total cost that's going to be or order totals um, I took the log of that okay just because some of the states are you know like California is really big and it's producing you know its order totals you know like 10 times bigger than in other states or even you know 50 100 times bigger so um, so we're gonna take the log of that uh, I said you know give me the count uh, how many kind of orders uh, get summarized and then go through and tell me, okay, in total, how many, um, you know, how many people are female? How many people are male? How many people um, have bachelor's degree? Um, so I only did, uh, I didn't do every single one of these uh, demographic things. I did um, things that I thought could be, you know, more revealing. So uh, uh, gender, uh, count of female, count of male, um, how often they placed orders on Amazon, so less than five times per month, five to ten times per month, more than ten times per month, okay? Um, how many in their household? Uh, so one person, two, three, or four or more people in their household. How many people use the, share the Amazon account? So, you know, you might have two people in the household, but each one have their own account so nobody shares, or, you know, both people might place orders on the same thing, right? Like, um, you know, you know, parents, you know, everybody on the family maybe uh, shares the same account. All right, and so that's on the how many. Um, this is information about the primary account holder. So, you know, what is the age of the primary account holder? This is income information on the primary account holder. You know, uh, how much income do they make per year? And then this is education information on the uh, primary account holder. If you look at kind of the, um, the, the, survey data which I, I think uh, customer info test and customer info train you'll see you know there's a de additional things um, and and so if you want to kind of go through and make you know things that are a little bit more robust uh, you have that that option but um, uh, but here uh, this is what we get monthly by state train and so um, so here you know here was uh, I went through and I filtered it just to January of 2018 in Alabama, and we have a total of 53 entries. And here you can see for Alabama 2018-1, a total of 53 entries. And then if you add up the, the total of all of these orders, it, uh, it becomes, you know, 1,774. Um, well, that's kind of interesting. 49 females and 4 males. So uh, if we look at... Uh, gender, I guess, yeah, if I do male, oops, I guess, uh, okay, so we'll do female, all right, so uh, 49 entries, is that what I said, yep, 49 entries, and if we have a total of, uh, yeah, so, yeah, sorted by that, only uh, only four four entries there, um, so that's just kind of by random, by random chance, and you can kind of go through, and, uh, and, you know, verify all of this information, but that's basically where this information is coming from. It's just kind of, uh, I joined that up, okay? And then to kind of uh, avoid uh, some outliers, I took the log information, and if that log information ended up, basically if the order total for the entire month, so like in North Dakota for May of 2018, all the orders totaled to three dollars and sixty-eight cents. Basically, there was one person who ordered one thing, and it was a total, you know. And so this was not something I wanted you to try to predict. Um, 
So I removed anybody where the total was less than uh, $100. Okay, so basically 2.0 uh, was the minimum for the log. Uh, so I removed that out. Okay, so I filtered anything where the log was less than 2. Okay, I basically do the same exact thing using the individuals in the test data, and I create the same exact thing, but I remove basically the response variables. I remove the order totals, I remove the log totals. So I basically do the same exact thing, and you can see, um, you know, before I, uh, before I state it, uh, save it. I, I, you know, I remove the order totals and the log totals. So these are going to be the things that you have to um, to predict. Okay. Um, as far as creating the Amazon training set and the Amazon test set, so for the Amazon training set, I took the entire kind of raw data and I just joined it to um, you know every individual that was part of the training uh, um, training individuals. Okay. So this this has kind of all of the variables. Uh, from the training data, so you can see exactly what product they ordered, and um, you know the the product ID and the the flash memory, I mean, the the category and stuff like that. And so you can see, you know, exactly what it was that they built or what they what they purchased. And then as far as the test data, um, I removed you know out of those variables, I only selected just a couple of them. I said the order date. I did not give you the purchase. Uh, price, but I gave you the quantity. Okay, um, uh, I did not give you the title or the product code, but I did keep the category. Okay, so you get um, the order date, the quantity, the the state, and the category uh, as as well as the uh, the individual. So you won't get to know the exact product, but if you really want to look at it, you can say, oh, okay, this was. Um, you know, these were headphones, or these were um, you know a, a mouse, or you know some some kind of uh, different kind of products okay so that is um, uh, that's how the Amazon test data set gets created okay and then um, and then you know the, the test data and the training data so that that all gets written out and then um, and then I created my solution file for for Kaggle so so hopefully that gives you a little bit of information regarding um, how uh, the data sets were generated and what you're looking at, um, so that uh, that's that. So if you go to Kaggle, um, you should be able to go to the data files, and you can download um, basically information. There's a, a few things you're going to see some spikes as far as the order dates. Like there are some spikes here, and these correspond to. Um, you can look at Amazon Prime Day uh, 2023. So actually, uh, or not 2023, you can say Amazon Prime Day 2022 was July 12th to July 13th. Okay. What was Amazon Prime Day in 2021 was June 21st to June 22nd. What was it in 2020? That was um, October 13th and October 14th. Okay. And then uh, 2019. So Amazon Prime Day is just kind of like this random where they are arbitrarily selected things. Okay, July 15th and July 16th. And so you will see spikes in the data set corresponding to that. Now, as far as predictions go, as far as predictions go, uh, I did not ask you to make predictions based on the date. I just want you to make predictions. Okay, so if you look at um, the, the data set, okay, so the, the training data, um, the, the quantity that you want to make prediction uh, for is log total. Okay, I, I also provide the original order total, and basically log base 10 gives you log total. So the test data gives you the same columns other than the order total and log total. Okay, so you will get um, basically, uh, so based on the state, the year, the month, uh, you know, this other information, I want you to predict, um, you know, basically how much uh, the total month's orders were. Okay, uh, so if you, you know, if we look at, uh, you'll, you'll see some some trends and patterns as well. Uh, generally, uh, November and December, there's a lot more kind of ordering because of holidays, and then you'll you'll always see like kind of a drop going from December to January. Okay, 
So December, uh, November, December, and then a drop to January and things like that. So that, that's going to be um, uh, some, some seasonal trends that you'll notice, um, you know, certainly, uh, you know, different kinds of uh, information. So that's all in there. And then again, the, the customer information for the individuals part of the test data set, customer information for the individuals part of the training data set, okay? A little, uh, some information about uh, data descriptions regarding kind of uh, some of the variable columns and whatnot. And again, if you want additional information, you can kind of uh, go through that and, uh, and you can kind of go through uh, the, the test information. So you can see um, uh, all of this as well. So uh, it is possible to create uh, models using just the training CSV file. And you don't have to use any of these other CSV files if you don't want to, okay? But they're there in case you wanted to enhance your, um, your models, okay? So in case you wanted to um, take basically uh, some of the CSV files uh, from the, um, and, uh, and try to, you know, calculate uh, additional variables and things like that, um, you know, you can do that. So that's um, that's uh, an option available to you uh, some of it might have to you might have to script that uh, yourself some of it you can use in conjunction with tidy models um, so these these additional tables are available for you to use to enhance your predictions you aren't required to use them it is possible to create models um, using just uh, the training uh, training and test CSVs as well okay um, Hopefully that, that gives you a good sense of how, uh, where this data is coming from. And um, thanks, for, uh, thanks for watching.